Now, this is a different kind of drawing. It also came out of our school of self-improvement here at the studio. It is the blueprint of a piece of equipment designed to make cartoons more realistic and enjoyable. This is the plan for a super cartoon camera. We call it the multiplane camera. It was intended for use in our feature length cartoons. You see, we decided for features, the camera needed improvement too. Actually, the pre-feature cartoon camera was fairly simple in construction and operation, and generally very satisfactory. Here, a Mickey Mouse short is being put on film. Mickey has been inked and painted on transparent sheets of celluloid. This happens to be a panorama effect where the character will walk in one place and the background keeps moving behind him to create the illusion. Each time a new cell of Mickey is photographed, the background must be moved a fraction of an inch. Photographing each one of these celluloids of Mickey and background makes a single frame of motion picture film. And here's how the action looks on the screen. Now note that our character is capable of giving us a real feeling of three dimensions. He can move farther away and come closer. He can turn so that we see all sides of him. He seems to have roundness. There's nothing flat about him. He can almost poke his finger in your eye. But when he leaves, uh, <clears throat> When he leaves, <laughs> when he leaves, whatever dimension he has given the scene leaves with him. Now, the unnatural flatness of the background becomes evident. But besides being merely unrealistic, the old fashioned flat background can also create a false effect. For instance, when our camera moves in closer on this moonlight scene, you'll notice that everything grows larger, including the moon. Now, when you walk along a country road toward the moon, it certainly doesn't grow larger like this, nor does it shrink in size when you walk away from it. The problem was how to take a painting and make it behave like a real piece of scenery under the camera. The trouble was we were photographing a flat two-dimensional background. So we set about making plans and blueprints for a new cartoon camera that would overcome this. The different elements in the scene were separated according to their varying distances from the viewer. This put the moon on a plane farthest away from the camera. With our original picture broken down in this manner, it is possible to control the relative speed with which each individual part of it moves to or away from the camera but the moon remains absolutely still, and so it will always remain the same, neither growing nor shrinking in size. Of course, our cartoon camera does not shoot sideways, but is placed above and shoots downward toward the drawing. Since this new camera used many planes, we called it the multiplane camera. And here now is our same moonlight scene, the way the multiplane camera sees it. As you can see, we finally got the moon to keep its proper distance. This trick of obtaining a feeling of real depth and dimension in our painted backgrounds was used extensively in the feature cartoons. Perhaps an outstanding example of this occurs in the opening scenes of our cartoon feature, Bambi. Here we see the multiplane camera crew preparing to shoot that scene. Here are the planes for that scene, each with its own separate part of the background painted in oil on glass.
Each of these background planes is placed on one of the levels under the camera. Each plane is capable of moving in various directions. Here we see one being moved sideways. The camera operator looking down from the viewpoint of the camera sees all the levels combined as one picture. From his view, we can see how each level or plane can move independently of the others. Here, the operator of each level is bringing his particular part of the background into the right position to start the scene. But before the scene can be photographed, the camera operator must okay the setup. Everything's okay except the bottom level. What's wrong down there, Alan? I was moving it the wrong way, Dick. I'm taking it back now. How's that? Looks fine now. Okay, we've got that frame. Let's get set for the second exposure. In our frame-by-frame -frame method of photographing a cartoon scene, the feeling of depth is not actually too evident when the scene is under the camera. You might be thinking that it looks as flat as the old-fashioned type of cartoon background. In fact, it does while it holds still. The trick of the multiplane camera is movement. 